Welcome back to another video folks. Uh, please excuse a rather rough and ready uh, location for the video. There's no light today at all in Scotland. It's nearly midday and um, any sunshine we've got is what my stepdaughter would call fake sunshine. It's not real. So I'm trying to make make do with, um, uh, with shots from a painting table. But what I've got here is 10 pans of, pans of force. Uh, and at long last, I've actually got some Panzer IVs for myself. I hate to think how many Panzer IV H's I've painted over the years. Starting six years ago when I first painted Flames of War, I've probably done no less than um, 70. And um, no more than 100. But these ones are for me. These are uh, Plastic Soldier uh, Panzer IVs. It's a shame they don't have Zimmerit, but I don't particularly like the Zimmerit that the Battlefront Panzer IVs have got on them. I've seen better Zimmerit on their later kits like the Tiger. Now that looks really nice. Um, but the, uh, the Battlefront Panzer IVs are just a bit too sieve-like. Uh, not random enough. Now I actually had a bit of a nightmare airbrushing these guys. The first five I did the airbrush itself really needed a clean. So I didn't have the kind of control that I wanted. And then um, after that, the, the second five had some problems, particularly with the, the pigment in the red-brown paint. Basically, with, with Tammy or red-brown, I find that as I get towards the bottom of the bottle, the paint starts to separate from the thinner. So, it's always best just to crack open another bottle. And I've probably got about four or five spare, um, so it's no great loss if there's a, if there's a few mils at the bottom that's not getting used. So these were airbrushed in Tamiya Buff, Red Brown and Olive Green. I'm using Olive Green instead of the Dark Brown just now because it gives a lighter finish and the Buff itself is also gives a lighter finish. It's looking a little bit grey, um, I can see it on my screen here, maybe not on yours, but they are um, a, a tan yellowish kind of finish to them. The streaks I've achieved using enamel washes, I think it's a humbrol enamel wash, put a little dot at the top of the panel, draw it down, do it again, draw it down. No, you've drawn it down using a, a brush with some thinner on it. And I've used grey as opposed to any other kind of streaking colour because you don't want to be darkening it too much. The washes and the gloss varnish themselves darken things down quite a lot. One thing I didn't do in these as well is I did not put a filter on. Normally I would filter all my soft edge camels, but I've been finding over time that the uh, the gloss varnish coat and the subsequent pin wash actually acts as a filter, and the, the filter itself will slightly darken the finish in most cases, unless you're using a light grey filter. But if you're using a light grey filter, you're, you're going for a fairly grey finish. So I decided to just cut that out and it softened things down quite nicely just following the normal finishing processes. So I reckon I'll be going that way again in future. Now these are going to be used for Flames of War. I can actually use this with Panzer fours in it at last. Uh, but they're also being painted for my One Day It'll Happen, my Curse campaign. I've got these to add to the Panzer threes and uh, my first lot of four tigers, that'll leave me four more tigers to finish in a different camo scheme from the first four and then it'll be half tracks infantry. Um, so still quite a bit of painting to do just on the German side and the Russian side is going to be a hell of a lot of tanks. Most of the infantry and guns are done. But despite any problems I had with airbrushing on these, these guys turned out quite nice. I think it doesn't, if you're having problems with airbrushing it doesn't hurt to go uh, more heavy on your camel colours anyway. Let's see if I can get a closer look at some of them. Now you can see I've been adding some um, can I get them into the light? Adding some storage. This guy will be a platoon commander. This guy uh, another platoon commander. Second in command and uh, first in command, but I've numbered them so that the platoon command and second in command can um, 
double as uh, the sorry the company command the second command can double as platoon commanders because in the cusk type setting there would be two sections of two and command tank. Now there is some uh, work with green stuff just to make tarpaulins on these guys or here oh, here we go there's a, a bedroll on the back of the turret and a, a tarp over um, a big uh, a rolled up tap. But we're looking forward to getting these on the table, using them as confident veterans. So even though their gun isn't great and their armour isn't great, you can still use them to very good effect. As long as you've got something else up your sleeve to deal with all those heavies that are out there. In late war, all those nasty Russian heavies and jumbos. But there you go, folks. At last, ten of my own Panzer IV H's.